Mashi, Ariaria. Oh, Yaria Mashi, Ariaria. Hallelujah, Ariaria Mashi, Ariaria. Hallelujah. He are a mamma, my share. Oh, are a mashe, are a rea. Oh, are a mashe, are a rea, are a rea. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father. That you sent your son to die for our sins, Lord. Thank you. And that he conquered death and the power of sin. Yes. And he rose again. And is seated with you, Lord. We thank you, God, that we get to partake in that glory. That we become partakers of the inheritance. Father, we thank you, Lord. For the redemption. That the cross has offered us, Lord. May we not take for granted the blood that was shed. But may we value it as priceless. So this morning, Lord, Father, we come to worship you. We want to declare the greatness of our God. We want to declare the goodness of our God. The love of the Father that he sent his Son. That whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to lead us, to reveal the truth to us, Lord. And as we come to worship today, Holy Spirit, may we have divine revelation of your truth. You are welcome here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from always my song Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life always oh, my song let the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from always oh, my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide In the ransom for my life Oh, is my soul Cause you are good You're good Oh, you are
on the cross for us you've been so good you've been so so good and the life you gave your body was broken your love poured out you bled and you died for me there on the cross you breathed your last as you were crucified you gave it all for me hallelujah what a savior Thank you for 
sins are scarlet. You have made us white as snow. And though our sins are scarlet, you have made us white as snow. Since I scarlet, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross. Oh, we thank you for. again just the voices oh hail king jesus 
kingdom stands above every power, every living soul is love, is like the sun, ever true, shining over all. Oh, we thank you, Jesus.
are worthy, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, the only expression of worship, the only uh, sufficient response is tears of joy, of gratitude, of remembrance. Oh, I'm just going to lead us into communion. If I don't stop now, there's just such a wonderful spirit of worship. Just going to go somewhere else and not come back. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sukuraba. Devotion, would you just pour it today? Before we take communion, just pour your devotion. Pour your devotion. Pour your devotion upon the one you love, the one pierced for you, the one given for you, the one pierced, pierced for you. Wounded, 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 carrying the wounds of love. In the wounds of love, we see the wounds of love. We pray, Sama. Wounded, 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 wounded in love. Wow, whoa, wounded in love. Wow.
given completely. Given completely. As we come to take communion, I want to introduce you today to your biggest battle. Your biggest battle in life is not going to be with the devil. Your biggest battle in life is going to be with that person you look at in the mirror. Self-will is the biggest battle a Christian will ever face. The decision to yield or not to yield is the biggest battle you will ever face. And you would say to me, why are you so sure of that? Let's read Luke 22. Verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. And as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place He said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And as he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, boy, that needs emphasizing. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And when he made that decision, and when he made that statement, that's where it was all won. That's where it could have all been lost, but that is where it was all won. And the battle for us in our lives is will we win the victory there? We can dream big dreams. We can talk about all the grandiose things we're going to do. We can say this. We can say that. We can say we're going to achieve this. We're going to do this or that. But if we don't win this battle, we will never know fullness. Never know fullness. His will submitting to his will yielding 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 some of us have learned this we've learned how to move people i'm challenging you this morning will you learn to move god will you learn to move god what moves god is yielding to his will not how clever you are not the crowd that you can pull not the gifts that you display, but can you yield to his will? And that's what Jesus did. When Jesus did that, what was heaven's response? Going on, the next verse says, Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Even before the cross, blood was being poured out in that place, in Gethsemane, in the place of crushing, in the place of yielding, in the place of broken surrender to the Lord. I want to invite you this morning to the Lord's table on that basis.
can tell me all your dreams. You can tell me all the things you've seen. You can tell me how many visions and dreams and how many, how many things you've seen. But there is no other way to fullness. There is no other way to resurrection than through death. There's no plan B. There's no backdoor route. If we want the fullness, we need to yield. We need to yield. We need to yield. So I invite you to do that with these words from John 12 verse 24, just one verse there. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. In dying, in yielding, in surrendering to His will, to Him surrendering, it's the path to the greatest harvest. And we are part of the harvest of His yielding and falling into the ground and dying. Now, sons and daughters of His, will you come with me and me with you as we come to His table? Will you yield? Would you do more this morning than just to have listened to what I've said? Would you hear what the Spirit is saying and pressing into your heart and my heart? Would you yield so that we can enter into resurrection life in a fresh way this morning? I'm going to give you just maybe about a minute, maybe less, just to prepare your heart before we eat and take the cup. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, you've heard those words, but listen to that. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, in the midst of betrayal, in the midst of the horror ahead of him. He said to his friends, and we are his friends, this is my body broken for you, yielded up for you. Let's see it now in remembrance. Taking a cup. He explained to them that he, he's making a new covenant. Not just a legal contract, but a covenant. Not just a transaction, but a covenant. So drink knowing that this is the basis upon which you sit this morning in fellowship with the living God if you know Jesus. Let's drink in remembrance of him.
it says in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 26 that every time we do this we are proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes and we can only proclaim his death if he is risen and so we proclaim the Lord's death through what we've done this morning and so father as we just seal this moment we yield afresh to you we yield afresh to you and we honor you that as you said not my will be done but yours be done and we yield we yield He rose again. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. Riga sakala raba shura dara, ruma sikini aroma sikaramos, som so som, hai ho shikala raga, shukara balaro. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. What a 
The seal of the cave was open and he came out and he is risen. Oh, break it, break it now. The name which is sufficiently powerful to break every chain, every chain of darkness, every chain of oppression. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. The name, the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Wow, Basa Kabod, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you for your glory this morning. Presence with your glory this morning in our midst, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. are you not seeing this hallelujah how oh. hallelujah hallelujah are you not seeing this hallelujah whoa i see the lord hallelujah I see the Lord high and lifted up. High and lifted up. Oh, yeah, yeah, wake, wake, awake. Those who do not see, wake up. Wake up and see. So, your reigns are answers. Wake, awake, awake, awake this morning. Let there be no sleeping souls here this morning, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Awaken every, every soul. Awaken every soul to see. Oh. Voice, a voice. Oh, shakara ragasya. Oh. Well, I came here for the offering message. That you know, right? It's easy. Put your hands in your pocket and pull out and give what you want to give. <laughs> Why do we make it complicated? <laughs> but today, the greatest of the offering message was preached, right? Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have an everlasting life. 
the greatest offering message of all times was preached today. Hallelujah. Should I say anything more? Brains albrenia silgrenia sulgarana ragasia. Rest a lesson, lesson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was the other day I was at my work and I I see a lot of interesting things in my work and then I look at businesses, industries to see if they are worthy to give money to. Hallelujah. You know there is only one worthy name. <laughs> Hallelujah. But yeah. And the other day I was looking at power industry and uh, you know electric power not the the, the power <laughs> yeah so the power industry is of three components and it's split into there is the generation side of it there is the transmission and distribution side of it and the utility companies or the consuming side of it hallelujah for some reason when I was looking going through this something clicked and then I was I believe I heard that we are all called to be transmission and distribution channels hallelujah there is the generation the power generating that ultimate source of power which carries the power Hallelujah, the generator, hallelujah. And we are connected to the generator. Hallelujah, we are continuously connected to the generator, which has got an unfailing source of power. Hallelujah, there, hallelujah. And the power flows through the transmission and distribution channels, hallelujah, to be passed on to the end user, hallelujah. Amen. God has called us to be that channel, hallelujah. And in that process, in that business, one interesting thing, when you look at the transmission and distribution business, hallelujah, if that channel starts consuming power by itself, that is a loss in business, hallelujah. That's called transmission loss, hallelujah. It doesn't reach the utility company or, or the consumer, hallelujah. God has called us to be transmission and distribution vessels, hallelujah. And be assured, as we transmit the, the, the power to the, the, the needy, the needed, hallelujah, for the kingdom purposes, hallelujah, the generator will ensure that the power flows through. Hallelujah. I got it. I don't know whether you got it. Hallelujah. Son of man came not to be served but to serve, hallelujah, and he gave his life as a ransom to many other, hallelujah, we are his witnesses, hallelujah, when the power came, we are called to be witnesses, hallelujah, to witness unto the end of the earth, hallelujah, if we mirror him, if we mirror the, that name, the ultimate name, hallelujah, what we receive, we transmit on, and that's why Paul also repeated, saying that Jesus, what Jesus said, that it is more, blessed to give than to receive hallelujah hallelujah there is a blessing in giving I mean the word says it is more blessed to give than to receive it doesn't say that it is the normal to give rather than to receive it is not a natural behavior of a person but the word says it is blessed to give than to receive hallelujah there is a blessing when you give and I can testify of that many times in my life and times I have many times I have emptied my pockets I emptied my bank accounts hallelujah not expecting to get something back but whenever I gave there was a great blessing and that blessing came in form of many things a great peace great joy great happiness whenever you offer sacrificially a great blessing comes it is without doubt hallelujah this morning as you prepare your hearts to offer unto God there is a great store of blessing which is being released to you and I declare it in the name of Jesus man Oh, 
before you You silence the boast of sin and grace The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory Before you are raised to life again And you have no right something wrong we look at the church we think there's something wrong but the work of the cross is perfect and it's finished hallelujah see the word of the Lord goes on to say which we'll read later it says they didn't understand the scriptures they didn't understand that which had been achieved so it's a happy day okay see I can understand the grump on Good Friday I can understand it don't agree with it because it was about 2,000 years ago and we know the end of the story but on this day I'm gonna be happy okay see I like Christmas. We like when new babies are born. They're cute. But he's not a baby in the manger anymore. He's not the crucified son on the cross anymore. He's the resurrected one. And because he's resurrected, we have hope. And because he's resurrected, we have life. And because he's resurrected, we have joy. So, 
I love these kids. I like to put them under pressure because they get fully cooked. You know, and when I step up, you can see the worship team going, where? See, with Rakesh, they know the songs he's going to ask. Okay? Prima, what are the songs your dad's going to ask? So many, so many beautiful <laughs> old songs. Yes. From the revival of 100 years ago. 200. But my rock essence comes out when I get these kids here. So we're going to sing Greatest Day in History now. We're going to try. Because we don't have Jerry on the guitar. Okay? Because there's no guitar support. You guys need to do air guitar for this one. Come on.
give you permission not to dance. But if you're kind of young, kind of, let's give the Lord a jump offering in this place. for us God hallelujah so let's give the Lord a clap offering in this place hallelujah praise God come on let's bless the worship team hallelujah you guys did amazing and um from, I'm sure even Jess and I would probably agree with me. These kids have been coughing for a couple of weeks now, isn't it? And Rayma's coughing has been keeping me up, okay? And so I, last week I realized I did such an Asian mom thing. Okay, not last week, but two days ago I said, Child, can you not cough so loud? <laughs> and she's looking, she goes, <coughs> she's looking at me. And I'm like, can you not call? And she's, she just burst out laughing, didn't you? Okay, so praise God. I've got, um, I, I read this joke, so I'm going to read it out to you. Okay, so hallelujah. Welcome to Easter Sunday service. Okay. So uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Um, young Ernie and his family were invited for uh, Easter Sunday lunch to his grandma's house. Um, this seems to be a true story because um, they've named the place and the name of the place is Monkey's Eyebrow. I mean, I'm not sure if I would buy a house in a place called Monkey's Eyebrow because I would think about me putting it up for sale and the depreciation that would come. Anyway, in Monkey's Eyebrow, Arizona, obviously, 
Everyone was seated around the table as the food was being served. When Ernie received his plate, he started eating straight away. Ernie, wait until you, we say grace, demanded his dad. I don't have to, the five-year-old replied. Of course you do, Ernest, his mother. Don't you love it when moms, when they're angry, the full name comes out? Have you had that? You know, well, anyway. You guys are such good people. Your parents never got upset with you, never had the full name. Isn't that right, Rema Samantha Korean? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so um, it says, um, of course you do, Ernest. His mom insisted rather forcefully, we always say a prayer before eating at our house. That's at our house, Ernie explained. But at this, our grandma's house, she knows how to cook. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, this is, <laughs> this, this one's a bit dicey. I hope you guys don't email me after this one. Funny church notices uh, uh, on uh, the Easter bulletin board at the church. Baptisms. After Easter, the north and south ends of the church will be utilized for baptisms. Children and adults will be baptized at both ends. Richard, my friend's little grandson came home from Sunday school and I asked him what they studied. He said, nothing. And I asked him, didn't you study about Jesus? And Richard replied, he said, no, he wasn't even there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you can email Rakesh Jeevan's back tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so anyway, so. It's Easter Sunday, and we love and celebrate Easter. So um, today, the worship team, I got invited to, when they were praying together, I got invited to join with the, the prayer. And as I was uh, joining, Rayma had this deep revelation of this morning when she was praying for worship. She had this deep, deep, somebody say deep. Deep, deep. And I'm embarrassing my daughter because, I mean, she decided to go to university away from home. So this is what happens. So, child, can you tell me your deep... Come here and tell the whole congregation as pastors of... Uh, the, ch the only child pastor of the... the, the, the child. Explain your deep revelation, child. This is so embarrassing. Um, yes, this is going to sound so silly now. Um, okay, so as I was as I was praying like last night and this morning, I was just so amazed by like the fact I was just like thinking about like we're singing all these songs, oh Jesus died on the cross. I was like, for a second I just had the split the second I was like, oh, but you know Jesus like one man died on the cross, you know, and we're all like, wow, that's so mad, like so crazy. But then I thought about it in a different context. If I was without sin, and all of you guys are sinning and I had to die for you guys, I don't know if I would do it. And I was thinking, Jesus, like at that situation, even like if I had to give my son to go die for all of you guys, that's crazy because you guys continue sinning, you guys continue doing all these things, but God still died on the cross for your sins after all of that. And I was like, yeah, that's, we sh thank you Jesus for dying on the cross for our sins. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> So then, yeah, so she was, that, was, that was a deep revelation there. But then I thought to myself, which one of us, I mean, we love, we love each other. We love our family. I mean, is there really one person that we would actually die for? That we would take that level of punishment, be stripped naked, pierced, carrying the most heavy cross, publicly shamed for any one of us in this room or in our homes. None of us are worthy of that. None of us are innocent. None of us have anything that can deem us worthy of this. 
But Jesus chose this. He used his free will to redeem each one of us because he deemed us precious, valuable, worthy, not in our perfection, but our infirmities, in our iniquities, in our silliness, in our stupidity, in all the things, in our sinfulness. He deemed us worthy and he chose the cross. And the thing is, he was fully man and he was fully God. But the man in him would have thought for a moment on that cross, why have you forsaken me? And when he died, I'm thinking the faith that he would rise again. It had never been done before. Never, ever been done before. And so, we see, we come into the history, the history account of the disciples after he'd been buried in Joseph's tomb. And John chapter 20, as I was reading, it says, Mary Magdalene and, she, and the other women, they came there. They couldn't find him in the tomb. And as they came together, uh, they went back and they went and told Peter and, and we're going to join the scripture from John 20 verse 4. It says, verse 3 actually, Peter there, therefore went out and the, other and the other disciple and were coming to the tomb. And so they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Let's just close our eyes before our God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for, to be over. Holy Spirit, you welcome me. Your glory, God is be overcome by your presence. Lord. Lord, we don't want to start this journey in your word today without meeting you at the end. We want to meet with you, Lord. Jesus name amen I love the humanity of John the the apostle the writer of this and this is how you know that that humans were used to write this and they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter the other disciples John John wrote this John, this is how competitive men are, right? John had to put that one thing, that one line in the gospel. That, so that 2,022 years later, we know that John is faster than Peter. I mean, he used his authority when writing the word and he says, I outran Peter. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this scene? Mary Magdalene comes 
to the heartbroken disciples and they, he's coming and saying he's not there they've taken they've taken the Lord see they didn't realize that he would do what he would do they didn't realize that he would rise from the dead as he had promised they thought his body was stolen the disciples thought the body was stolen and they were about to get into fisticuffs they were about to fight because they were like so offended and these two start running Peter and John and I can imagine picture this Peter the fisherman John the fisherman running Peter would have started first and when John overtook him he would have pretended to be spiritual but for a moment he would turn around and look at Peter right can you imagine it? I can imagine it. I can imagine you guys running and that look. And then he had to write the gospel of John just for this statement. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he comes here and he says, and he came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down, looked in and saw the linen cloths, cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together. I look at this and I think, yes, Jesus folded it. Or someone from heaven came and folded it. And if there's folding in heaven, each one of us can do some folding. Husbands, <laughs> hallelujah. This is your Easter message, by the way. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to be preaching this one. See, the scripture gives us all children folding. And then Peter goes in and then look at this. And the other disciple who had come to the tomb first went in also and he saw and he believed there's a lot to be unpacked here but i'm going to go to what i want to go to verse 9 says this for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead for as yet they did not know the scripture that they did not they didn't know that he was supposed to rise again from the dead and i believe that we if we as Christians must understand what the gospel is, what has been revealed to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, we've, we, the world has taught us we can celebrate Christmas. And if someone messes up with our Christmas, we will fight. When Starbucks changes the Christmas, we will fight. But when the Easter bunny takes over our Christmas, we don't fight. I was Googling mess uh, images for Easter and everything is a bunny that lays eggs. From where, oh where has this lie come from? I've never met a bunny that lays eggs. There's something abnormal about that message that we're telling our children. we haven't taken a stand because the Easter message is the message of the cross and that is our redemption hallelujah and it starts from the very beginning and the very beginning and I'm going to take you through scripture because the scripture says here that they did not know the scriptures so we're going to go through some scriptures smile at somebody and say she's going to go through some scriptures poke them poke them and say, Easter is not about the bunny. It's not about the bunny. So um, years ago, when our kids were y very young, we decided that uh, we're going to have an Easter party at our house. Okay? And um, this is before Capstone Church was planted. So we weren't so holy. Okay? So I'm just saying right now. And... Um, so we decided to uh, get some Easter eggs and put it in our backyard and we would search for it. The kids would search for it, find it. So 
I decided that even the men should also search because, you know, the, you know, like, isn't it? So we had one section for the kids and the kids uh, played, East, uh, found the eggs and everything like that. And at that, and then uh, George and Rakesh, Matthew, uh, Jeevan, um, Jeevan, all of them were there and we said we're going to have an Easter hunt for the eggs. And we didn't hide any eggs. We got Jeevan involved and gave him two or three eggs in his pocket. So these guys being the competitive ones that they are, they're going through the mint leaves. I mean, they were crushing those mint. There was almost mint chutney there, okay? Okay, because they're like, shh, 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 like this. And, and then suddenly one, I, I think Matthew out of the blue says, I don't think she's hidden in some eggs. And then Jeevan is like, ha, ah, I found one. So now that he's found one, they all have to search. And Sarah Chechi, Leah, and I, we just stood in the conservatory and we laughed our heads off. And, they, and then when they get discouraged, you wouldn't find another egg, okay? <laughs> and this, this was the best Easter, Leah. Was this not the best? I mean, other than the Easter Sunday that we had on Resurrection Sunday. Second one is these, these guys. And that's how I know this gospel. They outran him. The competition. Anyway, bless you guys. So, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Okay? Um, Adam and Eve sin. And as Adam and Eve sin, the word of the Lord says, okay, um, that says that the Lord, I mean, they decided to become tailors and make fig leaves. Okay? Fig leaf clothing. And it wasn't working. Okay? It wasn't covering their sin. And... Um, we are not talking about external covering. And the Lord says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So at that point, what the Lord does is, he, this is from the very beginning. The first book of the Bible is Genesis. After the first sin, the Lord says here, and so on to Adam and also his wife, the Lord made coats of skin and clothed them. So the covering for sin is through the remission, through the shedding of blood. If you look at the last book of the Bible, Genesis 19, 13, the word of the Lord says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of the Lord. See, this is Christ revealed. This Christ revealed in the, in, in the book of Revelation, he is the, he is me, he's clothed in blood. Why? Because he represents the eternal sacrifice of God through the re, for what? For the redemption of mankind. See, I woke up this morning, and like some of us, we're tired. We've had a busy weekend. Pr pretty much sometimes doing nothing. And then you get up, and this morning I got up and I thought, Lord, I'm happy because one thing is this. It's not by my merits I'm saved. I'm saved because of the blood of the Lamb. And all I have to do is accept it. See, the, the thing is, the disciples didn't know the scriptures they didn't understand that throughout there was a lamb that would rise again. A sacrifice to be made. Praise God. So turn your Bibles to Song of Songs chapter 4 verse 3. And this is speaking about, this is speaking about the love relationship between Christ and his body, the church. And song is, thy lips, your lips are like scar thread of scarlet. Say a strand of scarlet. Say a strand. Your lips are like the strand of scarlet and your mouth is lovely. See, people speak about the scarlet thread that you find throughout the Bible. From Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve fall into sin and God covers them. To Abraham's son on the mount. Where Isaac is taken up. And the Lord says sacrifice your son. 
And Abraham is willing to do it. The Lord provides a replacement in the, in the ram that was provided. And that is the representation of the replacement that is Jesus Christ for our penalties and our sins. In the gospel, no, in, in the book of Joshua, when the spies go into the land, there is Rahab, the woman. She helps the spies. And as she's helping the spies, she goes, can you save me? And the Israelites say, put a scarlet thread on your door. Put a scarlet thread on your door and you will survive. You and your household shall be saved. Put a scarlet thread on your door. At the time of Noah, every animal was called in two by two. Except for the pure ones. There were seven of them. Why? Because God understood that there needed to be, the Lord said, there needs to be enough to make a sacrifice for you guys. So that you can stand before me. Every sacrifice was so that we could approach God and God could answer our prayers and he could save us from death to life. That was a reason. Hallelujah. In Exodus 12, when the angel of death came upon Egypt, the Lord said, take a lamb on that first Passover. And he said, if you shed, take the shed blood of the lamb, mark your doorposts, partake in the lamb, death will pass over your house. That's a scarlet thread. The red blood that saves. Hallelujah. That's the blood that saves. You will see it throughout the Bible. That God wants to save his people. But he understood that every other sacrifice was temporary. Every other sacrifice did not have eternity flowing through its veins. Every other sacrifice was tainted, was polluted. So God became man and dwelt amongst us. He lived so that he may die, so that we may live. Hallelujah. This is the reason Jesus came. I used to get offended when somebody once, I, I mean, I heard it once and after that I got offended. When, before I became a Christian, someone said, Jesus came to die. And I thought that sounded offensive. I mean, we all die. Yeah. But I thought the reason for a child to be born is death. But who would do it but Jesus? No greater love as a man than to lay down his life for his friends, his beloved ones. And so, the Song of Solomon says this, Thy lips are like a scarlet thread, and thy speech, it says thy, your mouth is lovely. Your lips are like a scarlet thread. He's speaking to his bride, the church. And our lives, the words that we come out of our mouth, should speak about the resurrection and the glorious ascension and the blood that was shed for us. That's what our mouth, our lips should be like the strand of scarlet that is found in the Bible. Hallelujah. This is where our, see the whole world 
is cursing Christ. Christ, the, I mean, people use, you watch enough movies, you'll understand that you're using Jesus Christ as a curse word now. What? But the church must use the name of Jesus and the cross of Jesus as a blessing. The story, the story of the scarlet thread in the Bible is our love song, is our redemption song. What does redemption mean? See, the thing is, sometimes we don't sing it because we don't understand what happens. Colossians 1, 13 to 14 says this, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his son in whom we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Somebody say redemption. Say redemption. Say redemption. Okay, so what basically redemption means is you, the Lord has taken away the power of sin. See, let me bring this into practical aspects. Because of redemption... I know the end of my story. See, many of us are not understanding the benefits of the cross. We forget. You may have understood it, but you forget. When you trust in Jesus, when you believe in his name, you will not die, but you will spend eternity with him in heaven. It may not seem much here, but in time to come, we're looking at a blessed treasure. Hallelujah. See, he has redeemed you. That means if sin has taken a hold of your life, you can break free. You're not powerless. If sickness has taken a hold of your life, you can break free. You're not powerless. It means that if poverty, injustice, unfairness, lack has taken hold of your life, you can break free. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The power is there for us. The key has been given to us. See, we have the power. See, outside of this, there's no power. It's a 50-50. Within the cross, it is 100%. Ask me, am I blessed? Yes. 100%. You can't mess with my knowledge of my blessing. Something bad happens, God will turn it out. For my good. Because I am found in Christ by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed. My future is redeemed. My present is redeemed. My past is redeemed. I am wholly, completely, fully redeemed. And because of that, I have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it mean? Redeemed means repurchasing. 1 Timothy 2, chapter, five, chapter 2, verses 5 to 6. For there is one God. Say one God. There is only one God. Because by the definition of the word God, there can only be one. There is no gods. There's only one God. And there is one mediator between God and mankind. And his name is Jesus the Messiah, the Savior, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. When my family went through a, a financial crisis, we had to go do something. We had to sell. We had to actually, we put, in India, you put gold for pawning. I don't, you do it here too, I guess. I see a lot of pawn shops, especially in Asian areas. <laughs> and 
I remember this was the first time in my entire life I'd ever had to pawn something. So I went with this particular necklace and suppose I got 10,000 pounds, 10,000 rupees for that. As I pawned it, that 10,000 rupees was great. It helped me for a season. But when I went to buy it back, it was 17,000. Then when I went to buy it back, it was 22. And then it went, the, the price I had to pay back went above the value of the necklace. And I thought, leave it. I thought, leave it. When we sinned, we sold ourselves. And as time progressed, humanity went greater and deeper into darkness. But God didn't have that attitude saying, leave it. From our eyes, the price was not worth what he got back. But God sent his son as the ransom. God sent his son as the ransom, valuing you and I above that which we even value ourselves. And the price was the shedding of blood. And he did it. And he bought us back. So when we're bought back, we're not in that place anymore. I'm, my necklace that I gave that time is not with the thousands of necklaces that nobody wants anymore. There's an open door that says, I've paid the ultimate price. Do you want to come out? Do you want to come out? Do you want to come out and belong to my household? That's what Jesus did. And those who accepted that, they walked out of that place ransomed. When that cashier is looking at their accounts, it says paid for, paid for, paid for, paid for, paid for. So what does redemption mean? Redemption means forgiveness. Ephesians 1.7 in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The forgiveness of sins. There are three sets of people I've met in my life as Christians. One is they will never forgive their own sins. They will do blunder upon blunder. And they, they, they can't forgive their, themselves. And that is a separation between them and God. Because they can't approach. The second set of Christians is the ones who can't forgive somebody else's sins. On Feb 13th, 2007. At 2.37 in the afternoon, GMT. <laughs> and then there's the third. Sometimes A and B come together, I'm just saying. There's a third who the world will con consider foolish. But they're like this. I love Judah. Because suppose something, one day he was walking down the stairs. I'm standing up here. Okay, he's walking down the stairs. Something scares him right over there. I can see this. Okay. He's, he screams from that point. Hi, Judah. He, scre he screams from that point. Screams running from there. And he comes right over here. Like every, all of us turned around. And looked at him and he goes running he doesn't care if anybody else is there he's running to either Rachel or Jithin nobody else 
None of us matter at that moment. There's the third type, that whatever happens in their lives will run to the Father. Screaming and kicking. The whole world may say, shh. The whole world may say, that's childish. The whole world may ridicule you. But the word of the Lord says that in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. God's grace is rich. Not Bill Gates rich. I don't even know who the richest person now is. Warren Buffett. Okay, I don't know who it is. Or China will probably tell me like this. Rakesh. Elon Musk, really? But he just sold his houses. Okay, we'll see. Musk, bless him. Okay, so everyone's Googling this now. We, it's not the top. Huh? Is it? Bezos. Okay, we don't care about them. Okay, it's a tie, but we don't care about them. The riches of his grace is above this. See, we have to believe the word. See, happiness comes in knowing we're accepted. Nobody likes to feel rejected. No, the thing is, when you, the Lord can say till he's blue in the face, I don't know what color, like, I'm not judging God, okay? But if we don't believe his word, that says there is forgiveness of sins through the shedding of his blood, we won't be in a happy place. How do we get forgiveness of sins? Run. Come running, come running, come running to his mercy seat. He's calling, he's calling. Come running to his mercy seat. Hallelujah. Redemption means justification. We are freely justified. Being, Romans 3.24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Jesus Christ. Justification makes it seem like we're not sinners. In the courts of God, because of the blood of Jesus, we're not sinners. So we can boldly, somebody say boldly. Blowly. So, together with me. Blowly. Okay? I'm preparing you. Blowly. You can boldly approach. Now you guys are stuck. <laughs> you can bo boldly approach his throne. Because you're justified. Just as if you'd never sinned. How do you get that? Come running. Do a Judah. I love the kids. There's a lot to learn about the kids. From the kids. That's why the Lord says, be childlike. Don't want to be grown up. We can be mature. Or mature. How, how do the Brits say it? Correct. Just as if we've never sinned, we are justified. And that's a good place to be. So when you go and say, Lord, forgive me, believe that you're forgiven. And have a repentance. Have a turnaround of your attitude towards that for which you've asked repentance for. Or forgiveness for. So, suppose it's the love of money that has taken you away from God. Change your attitude towards money. Make it, understand that it's just a tool. In the hands of the believer to bless one another. And repent, turn around. Then come run and <laughs> so serious. Redemption means sanctification. Hallelujah. Sanctification means we're cleansed clean. They came running to the tomb. Our friends Peter and John. And they came running. But they didn't expect God to be risen. They didn't expect God to have a plan for their lives. They thought when Jesus said on that cross, it is finished, they thought he's dead. 
as they say in Saudi Arabia, kalas. Finished. You know? Done. But what he meant was the price was paid. It is finished. And then he rose again. And he said, if anyone believes in me, believes that my blood paid the penalty for your sins, you will be saved. You will be translated from death to life. You will have the hope of a happy ending. That those storms may come in your life, and storms will come. You will be still standing. If we keep that scarlet thread on our lips, we will know that which we speak is truth and God will establish that as truth in our lives. It's the fact is we forget the power of the cross. For it is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God for those who believe. And that, my friends, is what we're celebrating today. It is the greatest day in history when man stands redeemed, justified, free before a God to approach him so that mankind can be saved. Hallelujah. So I'm going to invite the worship team back. <laughs> Howdy, partners. Oh, Josh, Sean is like getting his throat ready. I love his high tones. How many of you love his high tones? Isn't it? Josh, no, sorry, Sean is like, stop embarrassing me. I'll tell my mom. But your mom has given me full permission. You guys don't understand. Some of your moms, kids, I'm telling you right now, message me and say it's fine. And the best part is I've got another generation rising up now. So, I want you to write now, before we start the song, is there anything you want forgiveness for? Or is there anyone you want to forgive? Do it now. Are you finding yourself outside the cross? Come back in. Say, Lord. So I'm going to say the prayer. So let's all say the prayer. Let's all stand up. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your message. I believe you died and you rose again. I thank you that you paid the penalty for my sins, that you redeemed me, that you paid the ransom for me that you sanctified me, you justified me. And because of you, I am free. I am alive. Jesus, be the Lord over my life and that of my family. I renounce, I give up sin unforgiveness I don't want anything to do with darkness disunity and anything that is not of the kingdom of God I reject it from my life and I declare I am free by the blood of Jesus Christ Holy Spirit Come and fill me up. Fill me, Lord. I now receive fullness of life. I receive joy. I receive love. I receive acceptance. Lord, I give you my life.
We just want to give our lives to the Lord. If you want to come and bow down before God, go ahead. Happy 
Hallelujah. So the moral of the story is don't search for Easter eggs on Easter. Search for Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Preeti. Come on, give a round of applause to Pastor Preeti for that powerful word. Thank you, Jesus. Right, I am in front of you to share some announcements. But before I go any further, can we have the video, please? Hey, we're not, we're in India. We're in India. No, we're not, we're in India. He's alive. He's alive, he is real. I'm sure that God is in your midst. He's in our midst here when, as we're in India. I'm just going to read a, a, a scripture today, uh, Romans 6, for the Passion Translation. Sharing in his death by our baptism means that we were co-buried with him. So that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. We have been co-resurrected with him so that we could be Amen. empowered to walk in the freshness of new life. Hallelujah. Since we are permanently grafted into him to experience a death like his, then we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection like his and the new life that it imparts. Amen. 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 This is our hope. Yes. This is our victory <laughs> in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yep. And scripture for me, same Bible though, okay? John 17 verse 3 says, And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Starting today, let's take a new fresh commitment. To all those who are digging deep to find and know Jesus more, let's dig deeper because our God wants to reveal himself. Let us get to know him. Our Jesus is beautiful and beyond any word of description. Amen. Father God, we pray a blessing on everyone, yes. Father God, our entire family. Lord, shower us with your love. Open our eyes that we may see you, we may know you, we may walk and act upon your love, oh God. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Amen. So, not only... Are we celebrating Resurrection Sunday? We're also going to be celebrating next week. They're going to be coming back tomorrow, which is great news. Um, it's good to see you all this morning, Easter Sunday. I know you all want uh, just going to get out of here because food is waiting. But uh, I'll be very quick with the announcements. Thursday night, Michael Fombaya is going to be teaching on the person, the work of Jesus Christ. Yes, you don't want to miss that. So Thursday night, 7 o'clock in this place, Please come and join us. Um, so Friday night, we're going to be starting uh, what we're calling it the core. Core is basically creating our roots into eternity. It's our membership class. So some of you have been coming uh, for not for too long. So we'd like to invite you. I'll be downstairs. Please give me your name. So what's, what's going to happen is from next, this coming Friday night, 7 p.m. onwards, we're going to be doing, uh, first teaching is actually on what the gospel is. We, can, we are saved by the gospel, we are being saved by the gospel, and we need the gospel every day. And we will be teaching on how to do life in church, how to navigate relationships, baptism classes. So 8th of May, we're going to have our baptism service. So I'm just giving you some information. This Friday night, Thursday night, we have Thursday, uh, the teaching. The next night, we have the core teaching. So if you are relatively new, and if you just want to do uh, sit under some good teaching on the gospel, Come, give me your names. I'll be downstairs. Core Friday night. Please. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So core, the teaching is teaching. Yeah. The core is also like if you're new new to Capstone and want to kind of fit into the family. Mm. Uh, this is this is something we used to run um, before actually the awakening. We used to have it every couple of months. So um, we would encourage those who want to be integrated within the family. To be a, uh, to attend core, uh, Eben. How many uh, is it? Three Fridays. Three Fridays. It's, it's just three Fridays, one Saturday. and one Saturday? one Saturday. It's just three Fridays and one Saturday. Oh my gosh! Is that all? That is everything. Yes, and then obviously that after the Saturday, which Saturday seventh of Saturday, seventh of May, and then eighth May we have the baptism service. So the Saturday one is like a whole day thing, uh, which is really powerful. We call it the Encounter Day. 
So not just for people that are attending call, just come out. We can just spend some time together in the presence of the Lord. How amazing was the last few nights, revival nights? To those of you who came, my goodness. Man, I felt something fresh was starting in our midst. Seriously, it was so beautiful. Um, I'll get to that. Uh, so um, can you play that video? It's a video on, some, some of you might have seen this video, but Alison, can I have that video, please? Where are the testimonies that the power of the kingdom is literally influencing people's lives? And that's when it gets a little bit tricky because there's not a whole lot of stories. God has made it clear that we are his preferred agents of change to the world through the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, when truly no one is available, he'll go straight for us himself. This is Ali, and he met Jesus while hanging out at Mecca. Yeah, you heard me, Mecca, the epicenter for the Muslim faith. When he was younger, Ali was a raging alcoholic, and his drinking got so bad that he moved away from his wife and children in Turkey to Saudi Arabia, simply to protect them from himself. While there, some Muslim friends of his talked him into going on Hajj to Mecca, the great pilgrimage to the holiest place in Islam. So I decided to go. And when I went there, everybody needs to sleep together. And everybody also goes seven times around the Kaaba. And they were also going to do the namaz. And there I said, well, maybe something good will come of it. And I did the namaz, the ritual prayers also. But I was very ashamed, because I didn't believe in it, and yet I was still doing it. So, everybody that night sleeps around the Kaaba. So I slept there. And then, in the night, I had this dream, and in the dream, Jesus came. First, he touched my forehead with his hand, and he said, You have been saved. You have been saved. Then he opened his hand and placed it on my chest, and he said, You belong to me. One of them, he said, you are saved, and then you belong to me, and he was smiling. And this is what I wanted to say. This is what he looked like. From his waist up, he was naked and shining pure white. He had a beard, like in the pictures, but a little bit longer. His hair and his beard, it was as if every hair was electrified light, shining from every hair. That's how handsome he was. And when he smiled, his teeth were shining white. And I was amazed at the way he stood there. And the lower part of him was like a cloud of melted iron. And in that cloud, he was taken up. And then a voice from here started to talk. And it was really moving around in the same way that your mouth moves around when you talk. This voice started from right here. That's how it felt to me. So I woke up my friend, and I said to my friend, Hey, look, do you hear that voice? He said, no. I said, but I've had this dream. I saw Jesus. He said, you ate too much food last night. You've gotten sick. Go back to sleep. What business does Jesus have in Muhammad's capital? So I tried to go back to sleep, but the voice wouldn't let me. It kept talking to me, just like I'm talking to you. And when it was morning time, the friends came over to me and they said, let's continue on the pilgrimage. And the voice was saying, no, you're not going to go. It wouldn't let me. And the voice was saying to me, go and collect all your stuff and go back to your country, look for your friends and find them. I didn't understand, but I made up my mind. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to go. I didn't understand it myself, 
So then I went and took a shower so that I could go back to where I had been. So, in order to take a shower, I got undressed. And I looked in this little mirror, and this part was white. But at that time, my hair, my beard, my mustache, there wasn't a single white hair anywhere. And there was this white everywhere. And so I tried to wipe it off. And when I wiped it, it didn't come off. I wiped it with water and soap, and it still didn't go away. And this voice said to me, I'm going to show you even more things than this. And then, since I knew it was Jesus, right there in the bathroom, I got down on my knees, because the only thing I knew to worship was to go down on my knees. So I got on my knees, and I said, yes, Jesus, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. It's been years since this encounter, and his hair is beginning to gray, but to this day, his chest hair is still white where Jesus touched him in his dream. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so, earlier this month, that was when Ramadan started for Muslims, and uh, this year particularly, I f there's been so many churches around London, they've been praying, um, there's been prayer chains that's been happening. So, what uh, so this 30 days is when Muslims fast and the last 10 days is normally and it's so many stories I couldn't find a specific one on YouTube but so many stories in the last 10 days is when Muslims believe that if they stay up the night and pray God will send an angel out and if they are seen praying or staying up their sins will be forgiven and for that night they will stay up I myself have stayed up and so this year that night starts on the Saturday so we as a church, we want to facilitate prayer chain for Muslims. What we were thinking was from 12 midnight until 6 in the morning, from Saturday until next Sunday. Who's up for that? Yeah, uh, so we'll put out the details on our church WhatsApp group. Uh, if you can fill your name, so it'll be 12, 15 minute slots. For every single one of us, we can pray and we'll be sending out like a prayer document where it'll we were specific on how we can pray for Muslims. 15 minutes of your time during the night. Let the Lord visit London. Let the Lord save Muslims. Amen. There's no greater joy. We'll see more brothers and sisters in eternity with the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, and s Saturday, we'll also be having the Bible reading from 8 in the morning uh, till 2 p.m. So last time we went, man, Genesis was taking long. How many of you came? It was, <laughs> we had an exodus, I think in the, I don't think we even come to the 20th, I think in the 15th or something chapter. But let's keep going. We're going to go through exodus every month. I think it's the third Saturday, but we'll, we want to make this a regular thing. On one, on one Saturday from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. We'll put this time slots out as well. So many of you came last time, Terran. Uh, Snez, uh, Judy from South Hall. So many of you guys come. So come out. Let's spend time praying. Again, it will be time slots. We'll be praying. Over, I mean, uh, reading the Bible see, out loud. And last but not the least, uh, next Monday. Not this Monday. Tomorrow is Bank Holiday Monday, which is great. Next Monday, we're going to be having three days of fasting prayer. So I felt, and Pastor Preeti was really prof prophesied over into this uh, three days fasting that something that which got started a few days ago, I mean two, two nights ago, there, is, there will be a breakthrough in our, through our prayer and fasting. So we want to invite you, come out for those nights, mark those dates, we've, we've sent out the calendar dates on the church WhatsApp group. And that's everything guys. You might be very happy to know that I'm finished with my announcement. Let's all stand up before we leave. Let's just say a quick word of prayer. We want to thank the Lord for what he's been doing. Father, we want to thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for stirring in our hearts a deep desire to behold you as you are, Lord, the crucified Christ, Lord. Help us to constantly have a meditation upon you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to live yielded lives to you, Lord. Thank you for drawing us to you. You're so loving, so gentle, so lowly, so kind. And so, Father, we want to... Um, Lord, right now, Lord, we want to thank you for this community that we are part of, Lord. Um, even as we go about our day, celebrate Easter Sunday, have some food later on, Easter, uh, tomorrow, bank holiday. Lord, help us to meditate on you. 
help us, Father. We, give, we ask for grace for this next season. So may we all go in the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.